Hello and welcome to KimCast Art. I'm Kim Caster, and we're going to go over how to use and what different brushes there are and how to use them. I should have said that to begin with. Um, there are so many brushes out there, it's very confusing for a lot of people. I get a lot of questions all the time about what brush to use for what, things of that nature. But I'll start out in the beginning with telling you that. A lot of brushes that are out there are really a multi-use brush. You can use one brush to do a whole painting. If you're comfortable using that brush, use it. You do not have to use specific brushes to paint whatever you want to paint. Brushes are made in certain ways really to try to help you in the process of your painting and, and make it easier for you to paint. And uh, give you a little bit more uh, time-saving ways of painting. That's really why there's so many different brushes out there. But some people find it just as easy to use one brush. And I've seen people that use a, a, like a flat brush, and they can paint a whole painting with it. And I have myself. This is a flat brush. You can see it right there. And they'll do a whole painting with it usually a landscape or something like that. I've seen portrait artists use a flat brush and do the whole portrait, and it would be a beautiful portrait. But that's the way they learned, and that's what they're comfortable doing. And certainly they may use a liner brush or something like that for really fine detail, but I've seen some that will even use a flat brush for that too. So let's go on with some identifying. I actually have a pamphlet here. I'm going to try to post it up here so that you guys can see it um, in the beginning of the video somewhere. But this, there are some information sheets out on the internet. You can print one out and it'll just give you the names of the brushes. And some of them will even give you the, the jobs that they do, so to speak. Like a flat brush, wide set, flat arrangement, a bristle is great for covering larger areas can be turned on its side and for line work. A bright bl brush is really like a flat brush. People confuse them. The bright and the flash are almost identical, but the very ends curve in a little bit. Similar to a flat, but produces smaller, more controlled stroke. The angle brush. So what we're going to stop right here, I'm going to start showing you some of these brushes so that you get a better idea of what they are and what they can do. And I'm actually going to paint some with these brushes, some of them, and give you an idea what they can do. So I'm going to use just a blue paint. So it makes it a bit easier for you to see. Put that over here. Some of them I'm not going to use, but let's start with the Bob Ross brushes, because a lot of people paint what are wet. And they watch my videos to learn how to paint what I want. We have the two inch brush. The biggest thing with Bob Ross brushes is make sure you keep them clean. They will last forever. I bet I've had this brush here for 20 years. If you keep it clean and get some brush cleaner, and there are treatments out there you can use um, to keep them straight and things like that and soften them. By all means, it's worth the expense. Because these are expensive brushes now. But I'll tell you something. Let me give you a little tip I learned a long time ago. Baby oil works wonders with these brushes. Just soak them up in baby oil. And let them sit for a day or so. And then, then wash them out. It will help them retain the softness that they originally came with. Otherwise, they get really, really stiff and brittle. If you don't get them good and clean. This one here is a Bob Ross brush. It looks like a two inch brush, but it's not. So don't confuse it. This is actually a blender brush. And if, if you watch him do the skies a lot, usually he'll use just this two inch brush because it's really soft enough. But he actually did make a brush that's even softer. It is really, really soft. For blending those skies and the clouds. They work wonderful. They are very pricey, but they work great. There are other ones out there on the market that do the same thing. 
for here. This is a blender. It's not a Bob Ross. I use it all the time. Very, very soft. You'll find this works wonderful. It works great for landscapes, portraits, anything that you want to blend. It's very, very soft. Very soft. Just keep them good and clean and dry, and they'll last forever. Now, we also have other blenders. A lot of people don't see these because a lot of people that do wet on wet. It's not a Bob Ross brush. You'll see these right here. They're also called a mop brush. And you can paint with these brushes too. But they are soft, just like a blender brush. So if you've got just a little area you want to just blend in with it, these are great for that. Or you can actually paint with one of these mop brushes. It's mop slash blender, basically. They work fantastic. Try them sometime. You also have the Bob Ross one-inch brushes. Now here's the regular one-inch brush right here. You probably recognize that it's square, but don't confuse it with the rounder one. This is the one that he made for doing bushes with. You can do bushes with this one too, but this one was made to do bushes. So if you get a hold of one, try it. You'll see it's got that bush look to it. You can go sideways with it or flat with it like that and make some great bushes with it. And you can do even leaves on trees with it. Now this is not a Bob Ross brush, but this is a flat brush. You find it'll work. Also, if you want to do a small painting, sometimes you don't want a big one inch brush. If you're doing a small one, these little ones will work. You can get them at the hardware store. And they work just fine. Bob Ross brushes, you'll notice, are actually hog hair, horse hair, stuff like that. They're not synthetic. This one actually is synthetic. But I probably use this more for acrylic than I do oil. But you could use it for oil if you wanted to. Here's a couple more. These are like a craft brush. But you know, these will work great for the landscape too. As you can see, it's rounded here. You can do bushes with this pretty easily, or even grass. Same with this. It's flat, but it's got that roundness to it that you can use it from the top down and make bushes with it. And you could probably even make clouds with it, with a bigger painting, most likely. There's also a brush here for bushes. This is a Bob Brock brush, really big. I got this one because I used to do some really, really, really big paintings, like 24 by 36. And I had big bushes in that paint. That painting was huge. Big bushes, and I wanted something that would make them bushes a lot quicker. And so that's why I invested in this particular brush. So let's move on. Bob Ross also has several sizes of the fan brush. Now, what does the fan brush work good for? I'm sure you've all seen him use the fan brush for clouds. We'll, we'll go ahead and do a little bit. So we'll take, this is uh, acrylic paint, by the way. It's not oil, but you can do clouds just like that. Or you can do a tree. The main thing is make sure you get plenty of paint. You could do like a pine tree. Just like that. Or you can use it for grass. Just like that. And sometimes you may want to go up with it like that. So it makes the grass stick up in the air like that. So fan brush, very handy brush to have. And they work very well. So we'll clean that one real quick. Now these brushes of Bob Ross's, don't let people fool you. They will work for acrylic too. They work on acrylic or oil. 
Now right here, we have, what if it's a proper name for them? A filbert. It slipped, it slipped my mind for some reason. A filbert. This one's a little bit shorter and flatter. It's probably a little bit more worn out. I've, these have, I've had these for many, many years. It probably was really long like that at one time. The filberts are very good for a lot of things. For filling in, um, let's see what the definition over here is. The actual art definition would be a paddle-shaped brush that holds a lot of water or in your case with oil, it would be thinner or whatever, or washes. The bristles remain together when wet, so great for smooth blending and stroking. This tailored shape is excellent for painting leaves and flowers. So, that's what it would be great for. You could paint leaves, flowers with it, whatever you want to paint. Or, you could use it for filling in areas with, you could even use it for big tree trunks, which is what I use it for a lot. We'll go back to the fan brush real quick. This one here is actually, you can see it's a rougher one. Let me get it close enough. It's a rougher, this is like a horse hair, hog hair, a small one. So see, you can get a really, really small fan brush. And you can make really, really tiny trees. So if you're doing a small picture, invest in a really tiny one. And I've used that many times, as you can tell. This one here is actually not a hairbrush. This is actually synthetic. So you'll find the synthetics are always really nice and soft. These really work really well for blending. Now with acrylic paint, you can still use them for other things, but you'll find that they're really, really soft. You don't have quite as much control is the hairbrush because the hairbrush is a lot stiffer. It kind of gives you more control, but you can find that these work really great for blending things in. So let's go to another specialty brush. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but let's get it as close as I can. This is a flat brush, but you can see there's little holes in it. It looks like a, a castle, side of a castle. That is for whatever you want it to be for, but say you are making a tree and you just wanted some leaves. Look at that. Leaves right there automatically. And you can go any direction you want with this thing to make them leaves. And that way you're not putting down too many leaves at one time. It works fantastic. It'll also work and help probably on fur for animals and things like that. Great little brush. I didn't I didn't even know I even had it until tonight when I looked through my brushes. Now I'm gonna take a flat brush really quick. Actually we're gonna take this we're gonna show you an angle brush. And a lot of people are not familiar with angle brushes, but they come in many, many different sizes. Let's see. There's a smaller one. And they've, I've even got some really, really tiny ones. So, let's right, uh, as you can see, they go right from one size to the other. And they go even smaller than that one. These are the one of the most fantastic little brushes you can use. They are just really incredible. You can take an angle brush, get your little bit of paint, and you can just paint just like this, same as a, a flat brush. Let me get a little more paint on there. Same as a flat brush. I want to actually paint a lot more on it because I want to do something in a minute. So you can paint whichever way you want to with it. Lots of paint on there. I don't want to do something else before with another brush. I have to do it fairly quick because I don't want it to dry too quickly. 
I put a little extra paint on there. And you can also use this brush to paint a line. All the lines you want. It works great for doing that. So depending on how thick you want the lines and how wide you want them and all that stuff, that's how you pick the brush. Experiment with these brushes. I can't emphasize how important it is to try them out. Try doing different things with these brushes. See the end of this brush? It's got a tag here. I forget the tag. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. I'll turn it sideways. It's the back end of the brush. People don't know that, but they buy these brushes and they don't know what they're for. Watch this. Well, the paint's not wet enough right now, but uh, <laughs> let me uh, put some more paint there. There was oil that would still be wet. <laughs> okay, so take this brush, take this, and you can pull it like this. flat at an angle and, and you can make little indentions as you see like for rocks and things like that this, or say a flower a weaving basket or something you can make weaves with it or whatever like that it's just another tool experiment with those things and you'll find that it'll, it'll It'll help you a lot in your painting. Okay, so we've got the angle brushes covered. Now let's take a look at a couple other specialty brushes. This one here, it's a, bit, it's got a little bit of an angle to it, but it's kind of rough right here. And there's another one, you can see it's, it's shorter on the outside and get longer on the inside, all the way around front and the back. More brushes that you can use this is from another man, from another maker, for grass. As you can see, look at that grass, how easy that is to make grass. So easy. Just like that. You can do the same thing with this one. This is a different kind, but you'll see it'll make grass a little bit different. It's a little bit flatter. See, the other one is thicker. This one's a little bit flatter. You could probably turn it upside down and do something a little bit different with it with more paint on it. Not like that. So every, each one of these brushes has a purpose. You just have to learn what you can do with them. And you could probably use these brushes for you know, if you make bricks, you make the lines for the bricks and make them red or whatever color you want, red and brown and whatever, get the white, white lines in them. And you can probably use these very lightly because the, the brushes stick out randomly. You use them from little white dots that are in the, in the bricks, you know, little white dirt and stuff like that, and sand and stuff. <clears throat> or on rocks. You know how you get rocks, they have the little different colored spots on the rocks and whatever. Those will probably work great for that too. Okay. So let's move on. Let me get this here. Now, see there was a little angle brush right there. Really tiny one. Let's see if we can get that close enough. Really tiny. I've used those when I do portraits almost all the time, the little tiny ones. They're so good at giving you lines. They're just, they're just wonderful. Now, flat brushes, you can get pretty wide. This one's synthetic. Works really great for doing backgrounds. Okay, we've got lots of different ones here. We got one more specialty brush right here I didn't see. Right here. Can you see that? See the hairs up on the top of it? I'm trying to move it so you can see it better. Put it up against my black shirt maybe. You can barely see just a few little hairs on the top. What are those for? 
Well, if you were painting an animal and you wanted to paint hair, and you could even use it for grass. See there? Works is for grass, but you can see, you could tell that would work beautifully for hair. With no with hardly no work at all. I mean you can just all you gotta do is use that brush. And see it'll save you from using a, a little liner brush, making all them tiny little brush strokes. This is a wonderful little brush, it'll work great for something like that. And see so here's another one. The other one is like that one, but this one's rounded on the top. I think the other one was rounded too, but this is just a different brand. Okay, let's go to the, we, we've already talked about the flat brushes. The only other thing I want to talk about flat brushes is, you can notice that a lot of times you'll have a different length. This is longer. you got more bristles, shorter bristle, bristles. Why is that? Because this one's going to hold more, more paint. It's going to be softer. Therefore, you won't be pushing very hard with that one. This one here is if you want to push harder and you want more detail on it, you'll be able to push a lot more firmly with it. That's the big difference. Try the two difference, the two different ones, and you'll be able to tell um, what the difference is when you actually use them. And there is a big difference. So let's go to what's called the rigor brush and the liner brush. Some people have different names for them. Um, liner, rigger. There's also a dagger brush, which is like an angle brush, but it's got a steeper angle to it. And um, the round brush. Okay, this would be considered a round. It's still kind of pointed, but it's a lot bigger. There's more hair to it, more bristles to it. That's actually considered a round, okay? So if we have a round brush, what we're going to get here is a round where we can do a lot more things like that with it. And basically we can actually just, you know, we can still write, but it's going to be a lot wider. You can use it for making dots with it maybe, whatever you want. And there's lots of different sizes and rounds. Them rounds go up to uh, from very from small to really big. Okay, this would be a rigger. See how long and you can't, but see how long that bristle is? Bring it down here into my shirt. Oop, there we go. Probably oh, can't see it there either. But that bristle is really long because it, it allows you a lot more control very lightly. You see, you actually got to have a little bit of medium with that. Very small. Need more paint. You gotta make sure that paint sticks really good to these rigor brushes. That's a pretty big line right there. And then depends on how much pressure you put on it. If you put more pressure down, you're gonna get a wider line like that. I rarely use one of those myself. Some people do more. I don't. I prefer using these really small ones. Which uh, they refer to as the liner brush. But it's also considered a rigger. That would be considered a rigger, and that would be my preferred one. I use that one the most in the smaller one. But this little tiny one here, you'll see is a lot, when the bristles are shorter, you get a lot more detail. You can get really, really tiny detail with it. So if you get over the paint and you want a lot of little bit of a detail, you 
you can get that detail with it. Really small detail. Because that's firmer. It's got a sh is it the shorter amount of bristles, the firmer it's going to be. But I like this one here. Probably is one of my favorites. Both of these are. I think one is a number one, and this one's a zero. But this one here is one I would probably use for doing a tree, branches, things like that. And the same with the other one. But I get a little bit thinner lines with this one here because it's a zero. The smaller the number, the smaller the number, the smaller the brush size. That's how that goes. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave the comments and I'll answer them for you. And uh, that's how brushes are really used. That's there's lots of brushes out there. Like I said, use whatever brush is you're more comfortable with. And sometimes it, it depends on your style of painting, too. Um, for example, Van Gogh. Excuse me. Van Gogh. Uh, you notice he used a lot of... Uh, he probably used a more of a rounded brush. And, and his strokes were basically like this. I mean... They were like, I mean, they all just different colors, but just like that. And some of them would just go, you know, the different ways, different different ways like this. And so he probably limited what he used for brushes because that was his style of painting. For those that you don't know, usually when I do traditional painting, we were talking about what I went earlier, like Bob Ross, because he uses uh, liquid white as a background. <clears throat> Excuse me, but if I'm doing an oil painting in traditional, most of the time, I'll do I'll draw out whatever I want, and I will actually paint it, which is called a block in with acrylic. It works way better. So you can block it in, get roughly the same, the right tones and colors that you want, and then go over it with oil. And you can change, the great part about it, you can change the color, because the oil is so much stronger. It'll just, you can change whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be, per se, whatever lines you drew already. You can change it whenever you want to. But a block-in helps you a lot. Get something on the paper. Um... And it will get you going a lot quicker when you do a painting. But anyway, this was great fun uh, trying to teach you how to use these brushes and what they were for. But remember, don't let anybody tell you you have to use a certain brush. You can use whatever brush you are comfortable with. So anyway, here at KimCast Art, we appreciate you watching. Please subscribe, like, and definitely leave some comments. I love to answer comments from people. And uh, make sure you've subscribed if you haven't subscribed yet. Y'all have a wonderful day, and we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.